This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This lecture is on Chapter 11 of the paper F5 lecture notes, uh, which is on budgeting. Uh, and as usual, I will split this into um, two or three lectures. Uh, here, um, there's not a lot by way of uh, arithmetic involved or calculations, because that really was tested in uh, paper F2. Um, but there's a lot of discussion that um, could be relevant in the exam, and so uh, I will need to have um, a bit of a chat. Um, the first uh, thing, if, you, if you're there, if you've got the notes on page one, it talks about you know what we mean by the budget and the benefits of budgeting. Um, you see, the thing is, most businesses, okay, do do budgets. And I think most of you know, well, should know from F2, what I mean by that, even if not from work. Uh, but they prepare budgets. Um, but what the people tend to think is that, oh, the budget is just effectively doing a forecast profit and loss, statement of profit and loss for next year. And although for most businesses that's what it ends up being, that's not really what we mean by budgets in full. And it's important to know why budgets are useful. Again, too many businesses. Why do you do your budget? Oh, because we always do a budget, you know. Um, there's not much point in doing a budget unless it is actually useful for running the business. And so it's very standard, those six benefits of budgeting. And so uh, be aware what they are and what we mean by each of them. Uh, the first one, planning. Budget means plan. And your budget, even though you may end up with a, um, a forecast statement of profit or loss, uh, there's a whole series of budgets. For instance, if you're um, a business that produces desks made of wood, we need to plan how much wood we're going to need to buy next year or maybe monthly. We need to plan how many staff we're going to need. Are we going to need more workers? We need to start hiring. Are we going to need fewer workers? We need to start getting rid of them. Well, they are budgets. There'll be a budget for materials, a budget for labour. And the labour budget isn't simply dollars. You know, human resources will need a budget. Ah, we need to recruit another 20 staff or have another thousand hours available of labour. We can cost it later, but the budgets are plans. There are plans for each aspect of the business, and they're certainly not all going to be in dollars. Uh, coordination. We need to make sure it all works. What I mean here is I may say to my um, production department, how many units do you think we're capable of making? Oh, we can make 5,000 a month. I asked my sales department, how many units uh, do you think we're going to be able to sell? Oh, we can sell uh, 4,000 a month. Well, there's not much point in letting production plan to produce 5,000 a month if we're only going to be able to sell 4,000 a month. We need to make sure everything fits together, that you know, human resources are budgeting on the right number of workers for the number of units we intend to produce, which fits with the number of units we expect to sell. Coordinate, fit together. Uh, control. Uh, this fits in with variance analysis, which again you should have heard from uh, paper F2, but we'll um, do much more on uh, later in F5. Uh, but one aspect of the budget is to um, have something to compare with as we're actually working during the year. What I mean is, suppose we budgeted on spending 5,000 a month on labour. Well, as we start going through the year, we, at the end of January, we look and we see, well, did we spend 5,000? Did we spend more? And if we found we spent more, uh, we spent 6,000 in January, we'll want to know why. Because if there's a problem, if something's gone wrong, and that's why we spent more, then obviously, if we can, we want to try and correct any problem so we don't overspend in future months. 
So it gives us something to check against, compare what actually happens with what we budgeted, and then we're in a position to see if we can sort out what went wrong. Uh, authorising and delegating. What I mean here, um, I said earlier that, you know, maybe we budgeted that based on what we expect to produce, uh, we're going to have to recruit another 500 employees. Well, once that budget is agreed that we need an extra 500, that effectively authorises human resources to get another 500 people. They don't need to come back to me for permission if I'm in charge. They've got permission, authorization to recruit another 500. And it becomes their responsibility. I've delegated it. It's their job to get another 500. Uh, evaluation of performance. Uh, budgets are used as targets for the managers. And we can measure how well they're doing. Uh, I may have, uh, we may have budgeted that we need to cut um, some of our overheads a bit. At the moment, overheads are five dollars an hour. We think we can get it down to four dollars an hour. And so maybe that becomes the target for the manager responsible. If you can get it down below the target, brilliant. He's performed well, maybe I'll give him a bonus. On the other hand, if he's uh, overspent, maybe it's not his fault, but if it is his fault, then he's performed badly, maybe I'll sack him. But it's a way of measuring performance, comparing how well the manager did with what we'd budgeted on happening. Uh, finally, communicating and motivating. Um, so we're communicating to managers what we want them to do. Once they've got the budget, sorry, keep using the same example, human resources budget says another 500 employees. Well, that's communicated to them that I want them to recruit another 500. As far as motivating them is concerned, uh, it fits in with the evaluation performance that having got a target, I can use it to motivate them if they beat target, I'll reward them. If they uh, don't beat target, or if they're worse than target, maybe uh, we'll punish them. So there are the main ways in which budgets are used, and the potential benefits of budgets. But again, it's not simply a forecast profit for next year. All right, a bit more bit before I give you a break. A um, bit of terminology, principal budget factor. Well, the thing is, where are we going to start? It's all right saying, let's do a budget for next year. I'm a desk producer. Well, how am I going to start? You know, I want lots of budgets. I want to budget for how much wood we need. I want to budget how many staff we need and so on. But we can't just rush in from nowhere. We have to decide where we're going to start. And usually, not always as I'll explain, but usually, the first thing we do is budget how many we think we can sell. Because only when we know how many we're going to sell can we decide how many we're going to produce. And only when we know how much we're going to produce can we decide how much wood we need, how much labour we need and so on. But we do need a starting point. And the first thing we budget is called the principal budget Factor. And I know you've been writing it all on the screen, I've typed it there, but read um, that first paragraph or the first line. It's the factor that limits the activity for the budget period. What's stopping us being bigger? And for most businesses, as I said and as I've written there, it's usually sales. Why aren't we twice as big? Ah, because we're limited by the demand, the sales. So usually 
Sales is the principal budget factor. Budget that first, then carry on with the others. It doesn't have to be, though. Um, again, suppose we make desks and they're made out of wood. Maybe we, we can, the demand is very high. We're capable of selling lots and lots of desks. But for some reason, this year, there's only a limited amount of wood available. We can only get hold of enough wood to make a thousand desks, even though we're capable of selling 10,000. Well, if we can't get hold of any more wood, if that's limiting what we can produce, then that's got to be the starting point. How much wood do we have? Therefore, how, much, how many desks can we produce? Therefore, how many staff we need, how many are we going to sell, and so on. So, uh, say I'm not writing down what I've typed there, I read it. But that's the principal budget factor. Um, and that's what we'd have to sort out first in real life, before we even start doing any budgets. We'd have to decide what is it that's limiting us. Is it a, uh, a limit on demand, or is it a shortage of materials, or is it a shortage of the need, type of staff we need, and so on. Uh, over the page, the preparation, that's really what I was just saying. But you see, normally, sales year, a principal budget factor, so that's normally the first thing you would budget. Then you can decide as a result how many you, you, you want to produce. When you know what you want to produce, uh, raw how, how much material you need, how much labour you need, how much overheads. Bring in selling and distribution, admin, uh, and then Ultimately, we can put all these separate little budgets together and produce a budgeted income statement or statement of profit or loss. Um, very commonly, a cash budget, budgeting month by month how much cash we need, you know, in case we can see we're going to run out of cash. And very often, and none of these are rules, but very often a capital expenditure budget. Uh, budgeting when are we going to spend money on new machines, etc. Because if it means it, it's likely to leave a lot of cash, if we're likely to be short of cash, we may decide to. We're going to have to borrow money or we may decide to delay buying new machines. Uh, and again, not always, uh, but quite likely, a budget is tend to financial position. Now, you'd never ever be asked to produce a complete budget, never. Um, in, in, in exams, but you could be expected, you are expected to know the sort of the way we go about it. Uh, here, just to give you a slight bit of relief from the talk, uh, there's an example on page 43 where uh, you're not asked to produce a full budget, but bits of budgets. And although this is more paper F2, to be honest, there's nothing extra in the arithmetic at F5, uh, certainly bits of this, uh, it could be quite nice to make one or two um, multiple choice questions. So let's have a look, it won't take long. Um, just make sure you are clear what we're doing. Uh, the XYZ company produces three products XYZ, and for the coming accounting period, Budgets are prepared using the following information. Well, sales are our principal budget factor. So we've got information about what we expect to sell and at what price. And then we've got lots of information about ooh, how much raw material per unit we expect to use, what inventories of finished goods we expect, and inventories of raw materials. And then at the bottom, and the standard hours, how many hours of labour we're budgeting on at per unit. And we're asked to prepare the following budgets. Now, as I say, one or two of these in an MCQ5. Uh, let's have a go. Uh, first of all, the sales budget. Well, that's a very easy one because the information's straight there. Um, sales budget, they want to the quantities, as I said before. Budgets aren't always in money, you know, the sales department need to know their target in terms of how many to sell, not just what revenue. So, I can do both at once though, we're budgeting on selling X, Y and Z. 
in terms of units, it's 2000x, 4000y, and 3000z. So there is our sales budget in units. Now, uh, what about revenue? Well, we know the selling price is 100. 130, 150. So we're budgeting on revenue in dollars of 200,000, uh, 520,000, uh, 450,000. So there's our sales revenue. Uh, don't put totals in for the sake of it, but here a total would be relevant, surely, that we're budgeting on overall on total revenue of zero seven. Oh, I think I'm right. One point one seven million. Uh, and of course, even though we're not going to do, and you wouldn't be asked to do a budgeted uh, profit statement for this one. Uh, clearly, that's, in real life, you would need that total. Uh, that would go on the profit statement. All right, that was an easy one. But what about B? A production budget in units. So if sales are our principal factor, it's the level of sales that determines how many we're going to produce. And we're producing three products. We know what we're uh, budgeting on selling. So why on earth should we produce any different? Well, the reason is uh, inventories. But, you know, if we've already got some units in inventories, we may decide we want to reduce inventories, therefore we'll need to produce less, or we may want to increase inventories, we'll produce, need to produce more than we sell. And so, to decide how many we uh, want to produce, what does it say in inventories? Product X, we're starting the year with 500 units, but for whatever reason, at the end of the year, the closing, we want it to be 600 units. So we want to increase the inventory, change in inventory. Here we want to increase it by 100 units. So to do that, we're going to have to produce 2,000 to cover the sales, another 100 to increase the inventory. The production will have to be 2,100 units. And of course, if you can do one, you can do all three. Uh, why? Yes, again, we're going to increase the inventory, this time by 200 units, so we need to produce 4,200. And Z, again, increase from 7 to 8 by 100 units, 3,100. There is our budget in units, as I've said several times. It's a plan. I'm not for the moment interested in how much it'll cost. My production manager needs to be told how many we want to produce. The production manager isn't directly uh, concerned with the cost at all. Uh, let's move on. C. Materials usage budget. If you look back at the question, there's two types of material. There's wood and there's varnish. And then, of course, whoever is in charge of materials we need to know how much wood, how much varnish we need. Well, surely the amount of uh, wood and varnish needed depends on how many we're producing. Uh, we know what the production is, I just worked it out. In units, 2100x, 4200y, 3100z. And if we know how many we produce and how many um, kilos or litres of material we need, I'll put them side by side. For wood, uh, each unit needs five kilos. Uh, each unit of X, each unit of uh, Y needs three kilos, each unit of Z needs two. And so in total, we'll need 10,500 for X, 12,600 for Y, uh, 6,200 for Z. Uh, but of course for this budget, uh, whoever's in charge doesn't really care which product needs it. He needs to know, or she, 
needs to know how much wood in total we need. So here the total is essential. 5, 11, 13, uh, 3, 9, 29,300 kilos. Again, no dollars. Not particularly relevant. Whoever's in charge needs to know we want, we're going to have to use that many kilos. Uh, what about um, varnish? Well, in a similar sort of way, um, varnish for X is 2 litres, so 2,100 units at 2 litres is 4,200 in total. Product Y needs 2, so 4,200 times 2 is 8,400. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. As Z, 1 litre, 3,100. Uh, so the total materials usage. 4, 12, 15. I think 15,700 litres. Uh, nearly there. What about D? Materials purchases. Now, of course, whoever's in charge of buying material, they need to know how many we want to buy. Why isn't that the same as how many we want to use? It's because, again, um, there are inventories, and if we are going to increase inventories, we'll need to buy more. If we're going to reduce inventories, we'll need to buy less. So, in fact, C, on its own, isn't the really important one. It's workings to be able to do D. How many are we going to buy? It's wood and it's varnish. We know what we're going to need to use for our production. But I want to know how many we need to buy. And as I just said, it depends on... What's happening to the inventory? What about wood? Ah, the moment with 21,000 kilos, we're going to reduce it by the end of the year on the 18,000. Well, we need 29,300 for production. If we're reducing inventories, fine, 3,000 of the inventory can go into production. We only need to buy the remaining. 26,300. And similarly, varnish, which way around is that point? Oh, again, it's reducing. So take a thousand out of the inventory, and it's only the remainder that needs to be bought this year. Now, that's in kilos, that's in litres. And now, of course, it perhaps is worth um, attaching a price to it, a value. Uh, the materials purchasing manager needs to know how much to buy and how much they're supposed to be paying. And so in dollars, do we know the cost? Yes, in the second table, the standard cost of raw material, wood is $8, varnish is 4 And so in total, wood... 210,400 in total litres, 58,800. You see how each budget is leading to another budget? You couldn't have done that one until you'd had your sales budget, gone from there to the production budget, gone from there to the usage budget. We all need doing in order in real life. All right, last of all, labour budget. I hope we know enough now that uh, even if it wasn't obvious at the beginning, it's obvious now. The labour we need depends on how many we produce. Well, we know what the production is of X, Y and Z. Where was it? 2, 1, 4, 2, 3, 1. How much labour does each unit need? Well, the last table, X, each unit needs four hours. 
Uh, y, six hours. Z, eight hours. Eight four hundred, twenty five two hundred, twenty four eight hundred, and so the total number of hours we're going to need I think fifty eight four hundred. So because human resources only down the hours we're going to have available. Uh, they also want the value, well, labour is paid $3 an hour from the question. So the amount we're budgeting on spending on labour, $175,200. There we are. So I think I've said enough there. <clears throat> I hope each one individually is easy enough. It's much more of a paper F2 thing, it really is, but there's no reason on earth why you shouldn't get bits of that. Um, certainly no multiple choice questions in F5. Uh, these incidentally, the fact that we've got a whole series of budgets which may end up being put together, they're known as functional budgets. How many kilos of wood do we need? How many hours of labour? And so on. Okay, as always, uh, I don't want to talk too long in, in, in any one session, so I'll have a break. In the next lecture, I'll carry on uh, with the same chapter and go through some bits that are perhaps a bit extra over and above paper F2.